that is so beautiful seeing the different colors the grass all gray no well, not gray it's gold orange the sun shining it's like instant therapy this was back in October 2013 as Cindy and I headed up onto the mountain for just a little outing now one of the things that uh, obviously anyone that watches our videos recognizes is that I am outspoken I have no problem talking about issues and uh, I might not always be right or I might never be right but nevertheless I do have opinions and just in the last week a report came out from the World Health Organization that air pollution killed approximately 7 million people worldwide in 2012 now you would think that this is a big news story I mean imagine 7 million people died from air pollution that's got to be breaking news that's got to be in the headlines here in Canada our very own CBC television network funded by the government on the national broadcast by Peter Masbridge they devoted 15 seconds to the story I counted off I rewatched it and counted 15 seconds but when it comes to the Malaysian airliner or other things I mean even the silliest little things they can devote minutes to it but to this global story that people are dying from air pollution they only gave it 15 seconds and to me that stinks high water of first of all the government in Canada is very anti uh, anything to do with pollution science of pollution global warming climate change anything like that is taboo the government has cut back scientific research there are lakes that have been used for uh, testing for pollution the remote lakes which have the tests have been shut down there's all kinds of different things our government does to oppress suppress whatever any news about pollution global warming or anything like that because we have the Alberta tar sands and that is the government's big money-making scheme for the future they're gonna be pipelining down to Texas pipelining to the East Coast pipelining to the West Coast sending the bitumen tar oil to any country that wants it no matter how dirty it is no matter how much it pollutes there is broken glass stuff all around plastic and things but we don't bring any of that up with us and anything that we do bring we also take home well we eat stuff but you know what I mean we don't leave plastic and we don't bring glass up here and break it and stuff like that no tin cans anything like that pollution comes in many different shapes and forms and sadly a lot of what we leave behind will not just vanish go away people that come up on the mountain the fire really good and hot break glass and quite often people come up you That's know the shooting their guns and what's a great these. target put out a bottle shoot it watch it explode that glass stays there plastic all these different things and does Cindy like to have fires Who's asking? I'm asking do you like to get up in the woods like this oh, I love it. we think of our planet as Eden we have yeah. Noah's Ark right here I mean that movie is coming out tonight in theaters Noah's Ark but we are living yeah, on the ark on and this ark is being destroyed yeah. it's like it's got leaks in it it's sinking and the culprits are human beings the broken glass really bothers yeah, me same. yes very good crazy eh? I used to love finding stuff like this I would use it in my furniture I would incorporate it into an arm or a leg or support piece or something it, it 
Now, if you've seen any of the images coming out of Asia, and that can be in China, it can be in uh, uh, India, images coming recently out of Europe, all the way around France and going up into Denmark, Germany, of the pollution that's happening. And that's happening now. Even in the fire pit, you shouldn't break glass. And it is all around. What's it going to be like in the next 10 20 or 50 years I know the demographic breakdown of our viewers so you got to have kids you got to have grandkids out there what are we leaving behind for them now the, being old enough like I am to remember things I remember back a few decades ago when one of the big stories in Canada, Ontario, had to do with oh acid God. rain. And while we're out here picnicking, a little chipmunk came along to picnic with us. How cute. Look at his little hands. He's holding it up. Oh, there he goes. He's up. No. Remember when acid rain was a big topic in Ontario? I like chipmunks. Because Michigan had a vibrant economy. Steel mills all throughout. Making the steel for American cars. And the steel mills had large chimney stacks. And the chimney stacks emitted pollution. And that pollution drifted up into Canada. And when the pollution mixed with water, the carbon, it fell into the lakes as acidy substance, acid rain. The lakes were dying. The trees were dying. I love nature's creatures. It doesn't matter if it's a chipmunk, a squirrel, birds, rabbits, whatever. It was an environmental I'm disaster. I'm always blown away by spider webs also. And I filmed them in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, in Jamaica, all over. And uh, to think that these spider webs, like how the heck does he go from one tree limb to another? It's like having a little suspension bridge or something. An environmental disaster. Imagine. And that was not that long ago. You having fun? Huh? Having fun? I'm old enough to remember when news stories the, uh... Cheetah? Yeah. came out from Athens, Greece, Rome, Italy, about all the ancient structures being damaged by acid rain, by pollution. Pollution emitted by vehicles planes all over the place we don't hear about stuff like that today one went there I wonder why we don't hear about one it is because I guarantee you it hasn't stopped I hear him. I was way over here now. when Cindy and I travel around we have noticed a lot of dead trees certain species of trees in, in whole groves all around planes 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 just dead. Is pollution contributing to that? Here in North America, our infrastructure is crumbling. From Vancouver to Toronto and Quebec, Montreal. Basically, we just turned out from where we had our little uh, bratwurst roast. Buildings are crumbling. See, Concrete and steel. Again, uh, Whatever it is, doesn't matter if it's smoke, smog, combination of both, whatever it is, that can't be good for a person to be breathing steady. What is pollution's role and in that? And Cindy, who's had a real problem with her sinuses, I mean, you can probably hear her sniffling on a lot of the videos, said that up while she was up here, it was a lot better. How is pollution so, affecting our health? Look at it. You, can, you can't see across, really. Higher up, you can see that there's a mountain there, but lower down, you can't see nothing. 
So the question still remains, what is it? After a long struggle when the tobacco industry was found guilty of yeah. contributing to de deaths with cancer, they got fined. Does anyone ever think that the oil industry yeah. will ever be fined for contributing to the global decline of health, deaths, buildings, infrastructure? What is it is the question. Wildlife? And like I said, even if it's smoke, let's just say that that is smoke. That is still not good for people to be breathing. We have to wake up today. Okanagan, unhealthy. Or there will be no tomorrow. Not only to this kind of pollution, but even the visible Coral ones. broken down, but that can happen in storms though. There's a lot of talk today about the debris fields in the Indian Ocean. Debris seen by satellites. Well, duh, it's garbage. Our oceans are full of garbage. Garbage we can see, garbage we can't see. All kinds of chemicals. Strange fossil of something. You can see it had a tail, it's cur curled around. Welcome to the Earth's Nightmare. There's these little people inhabiting this huge planet and all they can do is litter and garbage it up. We are the parasite on the face of the planet. Mainstream media devotes hours and hours right now to the missing Malaysian airliner. How much time do they devote to the pollution? Whether it's sightly or unsightly, the litter, the gases, the chemicals, virtually none, virtually no time devoted to it. Their corporate handlers wouldn't like that. Their advertisers wouldn't like that. All right, listen people, stop littering up my beach or I'm going to come over there and crawl up your legs. Either brave or dead. <laughs> He's alive. We have such a beautiful planet. There's the little lizard whose beach we're screwing up. We got to appreciate it for ourselves and we got to leave it in a better way than we had it left to us. It's inexcusable what is taking place globally. Plastic, rubber, I mean tires, all these different things all over. You can go up into pristine lakes in British Columbia and the water will have acid in it and if you look around you'll find everything from tires to appliances. Like I said, plastic bottles are the most common item out here, but shoes or an unbelievable second. Seen a few uh, clothes hangers too. Rodney Dangerfield used to say he gets no respect. Maybe people hang stuff out onto the uh, railing of the... What respect do we give our planet, our home? There should be a convention or a uh, the United Nations should come up with something against cruise ships and uh, have some kind of measures put around the deck that things don't fall in the water. Or at least really lessen the probability of it happening. Cindy and I were out in Samana Bay, Dominican Republic a few years ago and the boat that we were on broke down and came up onto a beach. There was not a residence anywhere nearby and by all counts it should have been a pristine Caribbean beach but it was actually littered worse than what we've seen here in Mexico. So a lot of those cruise ships that come along the Caribbean coast 
and I am going to look into it. I would have loved to take a cruise this spring, but I think I'm not going to take any cruises, or if I do, it will be to take a look and see what happens on board.